Hello and welcome to a code walkthrough. In this uh, bit of code we're talking about the emaildb.py. This is a, a beautiful little example and then it sort of reduces uh, talking to the database to kind of its, uh, its pure essence. And so we'll start out this code and we import the SQLite 3 just to get the library there. We make a connection and the, in databases we sort of end up with an open that's two steps. The, there's the connection to the database which checks access to the file and the cursor is kind of like our handle. We, it's not as simple as you just open it and read it, but you open it and then you send SQL commands through the cursor and then you get your responses through that same cursor. So CUR here is the variable that we're interested in. And the uh, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to, um, we, we've got this file, it will either create this file, and right now this file doesn't exist, it's going to be in the same director, directory, oops, email, yeah, there's no, there's no email DB, so this is actually going to create the file when it runs. Um, and then the first thing we're going to do is drop the table if it exists, drop table is a bit of SQL, the if exists just keeps this from blowing up if we start it with a fresh database. And in this case, there is no file there, so we are starting with a fresh database. So this will accomplish absolutely nothing, which is just fine. Now we're using triple quotes here. I'm just kind of using that to make this a little bit easier to read. I probably could pull those lines up a bit. Um, this, one's, uh, this one's actually small enough that I could... Maybe I'll just do that. Let's do that. Let's bring that baby right up and turn this into a single quote. That's short enough, right? But triple quote is just, this one here is a little longer, so I use triple quote. So we're going to drop table. That's going to do nothing first time through. Then we're going to do a create table. Now, sometimes your application will have like a readme or something. It says, go run these commands to set the database up. But we're able to just set this database up in this particular application. Um, we'll see later ones where we're going to leave the database and not start it fresh. And then this one, we can do the same. Um, and so, but this one, in this one, we could, but in, we're just going to start fresh by dropping the table. So we'll create it. We're going to have a uh, email and an account. Uh, we're going to basically what we're doing here is we're really going to pretend that this is a dictionary. If you recall, when I said dictionary, dictionary is like an in-memory database. Well, now we're using a database to do a database. But the first thing we're going to do here is pretend it's a dictionary. So that's a little crazy. So these next lines of code. Hopefully, are pretty familiar to you, right? You get a file name, um, loop through it, um, check to see if it's if it's you know grab inbox short by default, so we can press the enter key and then loop through it, right? And so this little part right here, this is our basic um, this is our basic loop that we're doing, um, and so uh, uh, you know that that is pretty normal. And if we look at this line right here, that line right there is the line that is. Um, uh, that line right there makes sure that we can uh, only get the from lines. We've done that a bunch of times, and we're going to split it. We're not going to strip the right because the split's going to take care of that. And then we're going to grab the email address, which, of course, in the from line is the second part, um, and, uh, and then uh, we will have that. So now we're going to do some database. So the first thing we're going to do, this, this bit right here is kind of like the dictionary part. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select count from our database, that is an integer, where email equals. And this part right here bears some explaining. This is going to be c7 at umich.edu or whatever. Now, it is dangerous to put those strings, especially from user entered, entered data, into your SQL. You technically could. I could make this be a email equals single quote c7 at umich.edu. I'd have to escape the quotes and stuff. But this question mark is a placeholder. And this is a way to basically make sure that we don't allow SQL injection. Go Google SQL injection um, to get a sense of what that is. Um, it's, more, it's more of an issue in online uh, applications, but in this application, we're just being um, good. And so the way this works is, this is a placeholder in this SQL that will ultimately repl be replaced by this. Now you could have several question marks. We only have one in here. And so you give a tuple. And if we just put email, it won't turn into a tuple. This is a one tuple, basically. This little weird parenthesis email, comma, parenthesis. That is a tuple with only one thing in it. And that's just the weird Python syntax. 
it's rare that I apologize for Python syntax, but that's a little bit um, less than pretty, but it's okay, it's a tuple. And normally, there would, if there were like two of these, then there would be email, name, da 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 da. Okay, so, so this cur.execute is actually not really retrieving the data. In a way, it's looking at the SQL and making sure that maybe it might verify that the table name is right, or if there's any syntax errors, et cetera, et cetera. So this, this actually is not really reading the data. So, but we have prepared this cursor. This is kind of like the opening of a file, but what we're opening is a record set. We're opening a set of records that are going to, you know, be this wherever it's true. So it's like we're going to read this like a file. Now in later things we'll loop through this, but we're only going to say, hey, grab that first one, right? We could have even put maybe a limit clause on there or something. Grab the first one and give it back in row. And so row is going to be a <coughs> row is going to be the information that we get from the database. And so that is, if there are no records that meet this, then row is going to be none. So here's kind of again like the the get. Here's like the get where if the row wasn't there, because the way we're doing this is we're going to end up with this row in the database. Here's this database, and there's going to be two columns, and there's a bunch of rows, and then here's going to be csev four and gen three and Stephen six, right? So these are the counts, and so we're grabbing this variable out if it's csev that we're grabbing, and that's going to come into here, right? That's going to show up in here. And that row, that row is um, actually, it, it turns out that the row is uh, a list, but we're only getting one thing. And what we really are doing is if we, if we search through and we got through and there was nothing, then row is none means that there was no, and we're seeing like, uh, like Chen for the first time, and we have to insert it. So if row is none, we're going to run an insert statement, insert into counts email count. Now we've got to set it to one because it's the first time we've seen it. So values and then again the question mark. The question mark basically says, hey, I'm going to have a value in this tuple and there's an ordering to the tuple and so there's only one question here, one question mark placeholder here and then one is the initial count. So email question mark count one away we go and so then then we have again we have a tuple that gives to this execute statement just like in that execute statement the corresponding sort of strings or integers that that are to be replaced by each of the questions. So when this runs, there's going to be a new record and there's going to be a one that's put in there into that new record. If on the other hand we pull back a row that exists, we're going to get this four number. Um, and you might think we want to take this four number and add it, but in databases it's always better to do an update because there might be multiple applications that are talking to this database at the same time. So no matter what update does is in a single atomic operation, it turns whatever this number is into one higher and we don't have to worry about other pieces of code potentially modifying it. Now in this case, we don't have to worry about that because we're the only piece of code, but using update to increment something is way better than reading the value and then doing an update to adding one inside of Python and then updating the new value, which is that's two SQL statements, but it's also not atomic, okay? So if the row is uh, none, uh, if the row exists, we just know that it exists and we just want to add one to the number. We, don't, we do have the number sitting here in the row variable, but we don't need it. And so we're going to say uh, update counts, set count equals count plus one, column name, where email equals, and then another placeholder, and then another tuple for the question mark, okay? And so that's what this little bit of code does. That is kind of the, the read it, parse it, check to see if it's there, if it's not, insert it, if it is, update it. And so then we see this con commit. And this con commit, basically the way it works is that the database is efficiently keeping some of the information in memory and at some point it has to write all that stuff out to disk. So you can choose at times where you put this commit. Um, right now we're going to commit every time through this loop, but you might commit every tenth time through the loop because the, the commit will take some time because it forces everything to be written to disk and these can run really fast and the commit is the slowest part here. So sometimes we do things like commit every tenth record or every hundredth record. 
if it's an online system, which is not what this is, um, you, you have to commit at the end of every sort of screen paint. But um, for this kind of a system, because we're putting so much in, this is kind of a bulk insert, we might come up with a thing where we, you know, every one, every tenth time we do a commit. But ultimately what this will do when this is running is it will build up slowly but surely, adding new records and then one, one, and then it'll be a two and a three and all these things and add another one, that'll be one. It'll do this thing, right? And then at the end of the day, that is what's going to be in the database. Now, um, so now we're, so let's take a look what's in the database. And now we can actually read the database. And so in the database, we're going to run a select and we're going to say, we're going to select the email and account from counts, order by count, descending. So look at that. Isn't that cool? We're getting in the top 10 because databases are good at sorting and they're good at all these other things. So we're going to then execute this and then we're going to ask for the rows one at a time and the rows are going to be a, row sub, a tuple and row sub zero will be email and row sub one will be count. So we run all this stuff and then we close the connection and away we go. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this. Let's go ahead and run all this stuff. Python 3, email db.py. It asks for a file name, mbox short. Now I can hit enter, right? Mbox short. And that's it. And it looks just like that and it counts it and away we go. Now the difference is at this point we have a file, email db.sqlite. And we can run the SQLite browser. And we can then open this database. And we can see what's in there. So here we go. It is made an SQLite database. We have a table of counts. And then we can take a look at the data. And there we go. We've got the data in a way, and we can do this. Um, and so let me close this. It's, it's important at times when you, you don't want necessarily to have, uh, well, let's see if we can cause it to lock up. Let me uh, run this again, and it's going to drop this table. So I'm going to run the code again, but this time I am going to do the full one, mbox.txt. Now we'll see what happens here, but it ran. And now, so what, what we have to do then to see this date is from the previous run, but if we want the most recent one, we hit refresh and then away we go. And so we can see this stuff. And so this is just a real simple start to see how you can connect some of the stuff that we've been doing, but store the data in a database. But the nice thing about the database is that it can um, store this stuff from run to run, even though in this case, we're dropping the table every time. Uh, in later things, we will see how we can store data from run to run to give ourselves more restartable processes. Cheers.